we're going to take a look at using uh, ASP.NET to connect to a database uh, to be able to read data uh, and then update the database uh, with uh, changes, uh, so updates, inserts, and deletes. Uh, we're going to use Access for this project. Um, Access is probably not a good solution for uh, any a website of any size, uh, but it works just fine for our little uh, uh, tests that we're doing here, uh, things that we've got going on just with uh, little personal websites and those kinds of stuff things. Um, again, if you're doing anything major, you're probably going to switch over to SQL, and you've probably had uh, most of your experience with SQL here. So for Access, we're just going to open it up. Uh, we're going to get on a blank database. Uh, pick our location. I'm just going to set it right on the desktop. Uh, I'm going to call it states. And I want to save it back to a 2002-2003 format. So it's an MDB file. We've got it created, uh, our database created now. Uh, here's our table. Um, and basically, we're just going to make a, a small database uh, that's got some just some simple state facts in it, uh, just something that we can connect to and see and modify. Uh, so let's uh, click on the table, and we're going to switch to design view. And let's call it uh, state facts. Make sure there's no spaces, uh, just to keep everything simple. No spaces, no underscores, no special characters, uh, anything like that here in your database. And we'll have our primary key, uh, and it will just call it uh, state ID, and allow it to under no, uh, uh, auto number. Uh, the next thing we want is state abbreviation, and text is fine, and state name and text will be fine let's see what other details we had here capital bird and flower okay we have those can save it. So we have a state facts table. Um, here we've got our uh, different uh, fields. So we've got the ID field, uh, abbreviation, name, capital, bird, flower. Um, the data types, we're going to auto number. Everything else is going to be text. Uh, state ID is going to be our primary key. So we'll switch this back to data sheet view. So now we can see it. So let's do uh, what's our first state. Alabama State Bird is going to be the yellow hammer and State Flower be the camellia Now notice uh, when I uh, when I press enter here and come down to this next line, uh, we'll automatically uh, number it, tab it across. It automatically gets the new. I think Alaska was next. Okay. So we can uh, continue on and add a few more uh, state uh, facts here in our database. So I went ahead and added in a few more uh, state facts here. I've got 10 of them. Uh, access is pretty user friendly. You can drag things out so that you can see uh, to make the columns wider, those kinds of things if you would like. Uh, and again, I've got this state ID that's auto numbering and then all of these other uh, categories here. So when I'm done, I'll save this up so all my work is saved. And then I can go ahead and close access. Uh, so I have my database here on the desktop. So let's open Visual Web Developer and create a new website. 
Uh, we're going to create an empty website using Visual Basic. Uh, we're going to set it on the desktop uh, and we'll just call this uh, states. Let's call it state website. Visual Web Developer thinks here for a little bit. Let's add a new folder, App Data, capital A, capital D with an underscore there. And let's open Web Config, and let's take out this line right here that causes problems with Instruct. We've saved that up. Let's uh, put our database in the app data folder. We come back in here, we notice the database is not showing up, so we need to refresh. So we'll right click up here uh, on the path. Now our state's database is showing up. So the first thing we want to do is just be able to uh, simply view everything in the database. Uh, so let's add a new item. And let's call this grid view. .aspx. It's Visual Basic. It's a web form. Uh, place code in a separate file. Name it grid view .aspx. We'll add it. over to design view and notice I've pinned my toolbox so when I open toolbox I pin it now I can see it uh, I want to the first thing I want to add is the data source so I'm going to go under data and add an access data source by simply double clicking it next thing I'm going to do is configure my data source Click on the state's database. I'm grabbing it from the state facts table. I'm just getting star, I'm getting everything. So my uh, SQL statement looks like this. Select star from state facts, that should look familiar. I'll test the query. Everything is coming back, so my data source looks good. Now that I've connected to the data source, I need to do something with it. I'm going to add a grid view. I'm going to choose the data source, point it up here to the access data source. And I'm going to save all of this up and just quickly view it in the browser. And it really is that simple uh, to get the, the data coming down uh, from the database, to be able to read from the database. Uh, so each one of these is a database field. Uh, we got the rows and the columns showing up here. Uh, state ID, our primary key is over here. So we can see uh, pretty much everything that we wanted uh, to be able to see. Uh, now I can go back and do a few other things here with the grid view. For example, I can enable sorting. And when I enable sorting, I can sort by the different fields. So here I've got them alphabetical by their, their abbreviation. I can sort them by their capital. So that might be useful. The other thing I can do, I don't particularly care for these names. Uh, so I can go into Edit Columns. And down here, these are the fields that are appearing. Uh, I don't care to have the state ID appearing. Nobody really needs to know that. That's just the primary key going on behind the scenes. So I'll remove it. Doesn't remove it from the database, it removes it from the grid view. State abbreviation, I've highlighted that. Header text comes up. I'm going to remove the ST. 
state name. things I can select OK and now notice that my headings have changed. This is kind of squished in here so I'm going to drag it a little bit wider and save this. Now I can see that my names have changed. I can also do some other uh, things here in grid view. I can get back into edit columns. Header style. I can choose the alignment if I would like to. Um, I can choose, uh, so this is the alignment for the header, this piece up here. Then I can have the item style, which is this piece down here. Uh, I'm actually not going to do that now. I'm going to save that and do that through CSS uh, here in a little bit. So I'm going to cancel out of here. One other thing I can do is auto format. When I do that, I, I can choose some preset uh, formatting. And again, I am not going to do this. I'm going to wait in, uh, in a later video. I'll show you how to do it with CSS. If I did it through the auto formatting, uh, every grid view on every page, I'd have to go in and make sure it all set the same and look the same. If I use CSS, I can just point uh, the different items to a CSS page, and then I can take care of the formatting in CSS. So I'm going to take care of all the formatting stuff through CSS, but the name uh, stuff, uh, the, what actually displays, I need to change in grid view. All right, so we have it displaying in grid view. That looks good. I can also enable paging. So if the grid view were to fill up, um, it would, I could move on to page two. So if we had, if uh, we reached a certain number of items in the grid view or the page filled, then we would see the little number two down here and we could click on it and it would show us the second page. Uh, so that's what paging uh, does for us. The one other thing I can do with grid view, if I come back to my data source and I configure my data source, I can click on advanced, generate, insert, update, and delete statements. Now I can come down here and, and enable editing and enable deleting. Uh, selection will save for another time. So I can edit this now. And the changes are actually occurring back on the database. I can choose to delete, and it removes the entry from the database. So this is just a simple video uh, showing you uh, what you can do with grid view.